one of the pieces that uh, got a lot of buzz was uh, your free skirt because um, Kylie Jenner wore it in 2015, mm -hmm. I think, and she shared it. What happened after that? Uh, it went a bit crazy for the weekend. <laughs> Someone sent it to me, I think, on Instagram or Facebook. And, and then immediately we just tried to get our name out because it's very important when a celebrity wears something that people actually know it's, it's our piece before the others start to knock it off. Um, so we just started to comment on Instagram and it really went viral. And it was a lot, a lot of the articles were really about the belt, like who made her belt, how expensive is her belt. Yeah, so it was it was amazing um, coverage for us and also ended in a lot of orders. So your leather garments are also uh, worn by Hollywood stars uh, such as Kristen Stewart, Eva Longoria, um, Megan Fox and singers mm -hmm. such as Gwen Stefani, Shakira, Katy Perry. How did all of that happen? Um, it started slowly, I think, with Monica Bellucci, um, who came directly. And then it got a lot bigger when Bia Kurlund, a well-known stylist, um, she took me on board in her showroom in LA. And she's been very supportive from the beginning on. And she, of course, she's very well connected. So a lot of stylists go to her place and pull our pieces from there. What do you think what do the celebrities appreciate most in your designs? Mm, I think they're always looking for something fresh, new, unique, something that not everybody else has worn yet, and something that maybe provokes a little bit, but it's still very flattering because, of course, they want to look good. And I think we can offer all of these points. What was your favorite moment? Which uh, celebrity wearing a piece of yours was like, oh my God, I made it. Uh, I think one of my favorites was Kristen Stewart. Also, her speech was very entertaining at Saturday Night Live. She was wearing the, the mesh pencil skirt from the Sleek collection. And the speech, she was um, the host of Saturday Night Live, which is already amazing since it's such a big show. And then, of course, um, she talked a bit about US politics, about Trump and her relationship with him. Did you know that before? or? That she was going to wear that? No, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know and I, I saw it, I think I was tagged on Instagram, but it was uh, like Saturday morning at, at five or so and I was only like half awake. <laughs> so I slept for a few hours more um, before I started to really look into it. You don't follow seasons. You do one main collection a year. What is the idea behind that? I don't really believe in, in the system with the seasons anymore. I think it just went way too fast. There's way too many collections and, and I don't want to be repetitive. And I think it takes time to really develop a new idea and not just to um, have the time for a great design, but also make sure the fit is perfect and the quality is perfect. So I'd rather do, do less and do those pieces really well. Is mass production the opposite of style? I wouldn't say it's the opposite of style, but it's just not a way that I feel comfortable working with. Um, because I really started with this whole craft because I like the material, I like the, the crafting itself. I really enjoy doing the pieces as well. So I don't want to be just on the computer and order three million pieces. And I think it's not sustainable the, the way how we shop and how we sell and how we produce. And the way we do it, it's, it's different in a lot of ways. We also don't release a collection, put it in sale after three months and then just throw it away. Um, I, think, I feel like that's a, an insult to your design because I want to do a, a design that's timeless mm -hmm. and that is just as, as attractive two years after I released it. So people can choose which piece they like the most just depending on their personal taste, depending on, on the style that they're looking for and not because it's fall, winter, 17 or 20 or whatever. You work with a lot of leather. What can you say to the leather critics? Um, for once, the suppliers, the leather that they use, it's a byproduct of the meat industry. So there were no animals killed just for the skin. It's really like the, the leftovers from the meat industry. And as long as there's people eating meat, we, we have the material. So why not make something out of it? And then I think it's also a very important point on how it's produced. So I don't think it's more ethical to produce a, a plastic piece 
um, that you're going to throw away after a short time and you produce it with very bad circumstances. Um, and how we make it with the made-to-order, we really know that we only make the piece for the person that orders it. I guess you also couldn't do like a fast fashion thing because you are a small team and I guess it takes you some time to do those pieces. It's always a question of if you want to outsource part of it, but I don't. I still want to keep the, the handmade and I don't want to go in huge quantities, but still we need to grow. Can you make a living out of it? It's getting to that point for sure, yeah. What do you think makes a difference compared to other maybe Swiss designers? I did some women's wear before, but I felt like if I specialize in something, I can make sure that I'm really an expert in that one field. And I don't feel comfortable making an amazing coat, amazing shoes, a bag, a blouse, swimwear, evening. I think you need such a huge team with a lot of expertise to cover all of these things in a perfect way. So I prefer to do less and, and be really the best in that. Our pieces are very easy to, to spot as well, mm -hmm. which is a huge advantage. And the style doesn't change completely every season. So very often people send me images of someone wearing my piece because they already know it's mine. We are here in your atelier in Zurich where everything is being produced. How difficult is it to be successful while still staying in Zurich? It's not so important anymore, thanks to the internet and social media. So I can stay wherever and do the same kind of work. I was also on the countryside in Austria and I made it into Vogue during that time. And it's not because there's any editors <laughs> anywhere around there. Um, so the internet helps a lot for sure. And of course, it's where I grew up. It's where my friends and my family. So that's very a supportive system. Um, geographically, it's an advantage as well. I mean, I can travel to Paris, to, to Berlin, to London, to Italy in no time. Um, but of course, it has its it disadvantages as well. But that's why you somehow also have a showroom in LA. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Do you travel often, forth and back? Um, not as often as I want to, <laughs> but once a year I try for sure to go there and meet the people in person. I think it's very important to have that personal connection. This year you won the Premium Young Talent Award and last year also the Design Prize uh, in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. How do these awards influence uh, your success? It motivates you to keep going. Um, financially, of course, it's, it's also nice to win a prize. Um, but I don't think I would work any different because, I mean, these are two yes, but you also get a lot of no's mm -hmm. and you can't really hold on to that too much. Mm. Tell me of your no's. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't because um, I try to forget them real oh, fast. Okay. I always say um, I only, I'm only annoyed the length of a cigarette <laughs> <laughs> and then I go back to work and keep going and focus on the good stuff. A length of a cigarette for a no <laughs> and when it's a yes, it's a bottle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we started that a long time ago that when we had something to celebrate, we open a bottle something bubbly and then we just write the reason why we why we open it why we celebrate on the cork and we keep it so you already have a collection yeah it's a growing collection <laughs> of corks <laughs> you've also been invited to beijing and uh, dubai how different is the clientele there from the one you used to when i was in beijing and i checked out the stores it was really nice to see how many exciting pieces they have. I feel like in Switzerland, um, a lot of shops, they have a lot of basics and then maybe they add two, three exciting pieces to it to make the selection a bit more exciting and to get people in. And I felt like there it was the, different, it was the opposite. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot of exciting pieces and then maybe you'll find a white shirt somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really a lot of, of crazy pieces and people seem to buy it. Your uh, latest uh, collection, Shibui, mm -hmm. just came out in February 2018. It's very sensual. The name sounds Japanese. What was it, the inspiration for that? Um, the main inspiration was Tadao Ando, a, he's a Japanese architect and one of his um, pieces, um, the Church of Light for example, I think is very impressive and how he plays just with, with light and with transparency. Um, it's very simple, very elegant his designs. He tries to integrate uh, the architecture also in the, in the surrounding because as he says it's 
it's not like art, like architecture, it has a reason, like it has a function. So it cannot just be beautiful. It also has to function somehow. It also has to be a space where people go in, can go in. And I think with clothing, it's, it's similar. Like it's a lot about how nice the piece looks, but mm -hmm. it's not just an object. It also has to function on the body. It also has to work with the proportions um, of a woman. You have this other collection called Sleek that is kind of sexy, darker, dreamerish, I would say. Uh, what was the most successful piece of that collection? Or is there any anecdote that you can tell us? We had the leg pieces that are, of course, like a showstopper. It was one of the favorites already when we had the fashion show. And shortly after, it was worn by Ciara and in Calvin Harris video. And then, of course, the mesh pencil skirt mm -hmm. that we talked about earlier that was on Kristen Stewart. Mm -hmm. And it was originally also planned more as a showpiece. And so we kind of made it for the show very last minute. I finished the skirt on the same day as the show was. And then we kind of put it away, thinking like, okay, the show's over. It had its moment. And I didn't really think that that would be a piece that we sell a lot um, until Kristen wore it. And then I had to figure out how to actually make it. <laughs> <laughs> so we were able to sell it because it's custom made. So it's... People sent us their measurements and then we had to adjust it. Sometimes it's uh, the unexpected, right? Yeah, exactly. Does that happen a lot to you? Uh, it's always hard to tell in advantage, yeah, like uh, in advance, I mean, which piece is really going to do best. Like the fringe belt as well, it was a piece that I almost dropped um, before I made the collection. And it was actually thanks to, to one of my best friends who was like, no, no, just do it. It's a good piece. Because I saw that there's already like, something similar maybe somewhere mm. and then I'm always like no I want to do something new that hasn't been there before um, but yeah she told me to do it anyway. I mean there's so many designers around how, how can you make sure that you're still being original? I just try to make it better <laughs> if it's been there before just make it better. How do your Swiss roots influence your design and your work? I don't think it influences my design too much mm. I think it might get too conservative if I if it would influence the design, but I think it's um, it influenced my work ethics for sure. Um, I'm a very hard worker, I'd say, I'm very precise, uh, very persistent. I don't give up easily, and you keep track on your finances. <laughs> it's very Swiss, <laughs> but it helps. <laughs> Talking of finances, how long do you think you still have to go on until you can really make a living out of it? There's this statistic that says 90% of all the brands, um, they give up in the first three to five years. Mm -hmm. So we're almost at five years now. And I, I don't think about giving up anytime soon. Um, so I think when, we, when you go through that crucial phase of those three to five years, and you're able to finance those first years, and it's growing, we sell more every year. Um, so I think it's going into a good... A good way. Besides being a fashion designer, you also work as a stylist for mm -hmm. magazines, celebrities. I saw that you also styled, for instance, tennis star uh, Martina Hingis or skier Laura Gould for some covers. Do you sometimes need to convince them to change a little bit? Um, sometimes, because we, um, they're usually not used to wearing these kind of clothes. And that's, of course, why they bring in me as well to, to make a, a full story out of it. Um, but they're always very nice to work with, really. Like, I don't think I've had any athlete that was not um, nice and easy to work with. And they usually also enjoy it to see something new. And sometimes they're surprised, like with, with Martina, I, I made a dress out of a tennis net, actually. <laughs> and it was really fun. And I remember when she, she looked at the laptop and she saw the picture and she was like, oh, this looks good, actually. And it's like, yeah, we know what we're doing. <laughs> So it was really nice to work with her. What do you think of the Swiss fashion scene? It's very friendly, it's very supportive. So it's not competitive, even though it's like a small market? No, I don't think so. At least for me, it's not. But I think it's also my advantage that I do something that no, what is, is very different to what others do. And what is coming up next in the future? What are your next projects? Well, I just started the whole research for the next collection. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a, a very exciting new thing, but it's going to take a couple of months more until it comes out. It's for next year, I guess, because this yeah. year you have 
Mm. Can you tell us a little bit in which direction it's going? Um, it's going to be a little bit leather. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say so far. <laughs> well, then, good luck with that and thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you.